Hey guys, today's video is about thread milling. Let me ask you, have you ever been thread milling and had poor tool life or bad surface finish even though your speeds and feeds look perfect? I know I've been there. Well, today we're going to walk through a thread milling operation in Fusion 360 and we'll go through the feeds and speeds from start to finish. And the main thing we're going to look at is the chip load that Fusion 360 is telling you versus the actual chip load that we're going to see at the tip of the tool. I'm Vince and you're going to learn something today. Let's make some threads. We're going to start off with just a very simple sample part. It's just a block with a bunch of threaded holes in it. I use something like this to prove out recipes for proven cut. The machine we'll be using is a Carbide 3D Shapeoko HDM and it's one of the more heavier duty routers that we have so I thought it was a good choice for the multi-form thread mill. Usually I'd use a drill to drill these holes but because this is an open face bore so we can see what's going on I chose to use a 3 16th end mill and bore them out. Chip evacuation wasn't really a concern because of the open face and the through hole. I then ran a chamfer toolpath and last but not least our thread milling toolpath. As you can see we only have to make one revolution with the multi-form thread mill to thread the whole part. Alright fees and speeds let's figure out how to run these tools correctly. The two most important pieces of information you'll need is the SFM recommendation and the feed per tooth recommendation for your tool and the material. If your manufacturer of your tool doesn't give you any recommendation, one of the best resources that I've found is Harvey Tool. This is Harvey Tool's Feeds and Speeds guide right here for a multi-form thread mill. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up my diameter of my tool which is 0 0.18 which is right around here and my material which is 6061 which is right here. So they recommend an SFM of 1200 which is pretty high and a chip load of 0 0.00084. Now let's put those into Fusion and see what happens. Okay so for our spindle speed we're going to be running 8000 RPM which is the minimum RPM for the HDM router however compared to a mill that's still pretty high. Our feed per tooth 0 0.00084 which gives us a cutting feed rate of 20.16. Now what if I told you that Fusion is lying to you? I mean not on purpose or anything but we'll walk through that in a second. Our plunge feed rate pretty high, feed per rev of 5 thou and that's because we're not cutting on our plunge so I want to decrease the cycle time as much as possible. For anyone new here your chip load is the chip thickness each flute cuts per revolution and it directly correlates to how much power and force is needed in the cut. Too small of a chip load and you won't create a chip and you'll be rubbing. Too large a chip load and you could have poor tool life and just put too much load on the actual tool. And this is why it's very important to get this right. Generally speaking when tools get smaller that sweet spot of acceptable chip load also gets smaller as well. And most of the thread mills I've run are pretty small so this is why we like to look at this measurement. Fusion calculates its feed rates based off the center line of the tool. And as you can see, this tool is taking a much smaller path than the actual diameter of the hole. Now let's figure out how to account for that. We'll use a calculator. The major diameter of that hole, 0 0.25 for a quarter inch thread. We're going to minus the cutter diameter, 0 0.18, 0 0.07. And what that is, that's the actual circle that the tool is going to take. And that's what Fusion is calculating the feed rate off of. Let's do a little bit more math to see how to adjust for that. We'll take that major diameter again, 0 0.25. Let's divide it by the difference, 0 0.07. And we get 3.57. So Fusion is actually telling us to run 3.57 times faster than what we wanted for our actual chip load. Let's simplify that equation just a little bit. We'll take the major diameter 0 0.25 minus the tool diameter 0 0.18 equals 0 0.07 times that by the feed rate at the chip load that we want which is right around 20 equals 1.4 divided by the major diameter 0 0.25. So our adjusted feed rate is 5.6 inches a minute to get an actual chip load of 0 0.00084. So all we'll do is we'll just change this to 
Let's go to the next tab. For the geometry, pretty simple tab here. All we do is select our geometry. If they're all the same size holes, you just click here, select same diameter, and then you only have to click one. With the heights tab, for the multi-form, it's a little bit different. Our bottom height is our whole bottom, and our top height is our whole bottom, plus 0.1. And as you can see, that lets us just get barely over one revolution, just to make sure we have perfect blend. In the passes tab, it's a little bit more complicated. Our thread pitch, pretty simple. It's a quarter 20 thread. One divided by 20 is 0 0.05. And for our pitch diameter offset, I recommend using the NYC CNC thread milling workbook and it makes getting the PDO almost perfect every time because it takes into account a flat or a crest of the tool. It also tells you if it's the right tool or the wrong tool for the thread you're trying to make. Awesome resource. I input my thread mill cutter diameter 0.18 and I estimated the flat at about 3 thou for a quarter 20 right here saying our PDO is 0.0536, so that's what I input in diffusion, right here, 0.0536. I do want multiple passes, so I ended up taking three passes at 10 thou each. I also put in a repeat pass, and what that is, it's a spring pass, just to help with deflection. For the number of step overs, depending on the machine and how much deflection is, is built into it, <laughs> I usually like to err on the small side and then work up from there. I also added a negative stock to leave, negative radial, to open up the thread a little bit just to account for deflection to get that perfect fit. In the linking tab, you want to use helical leads and as always, lead to center. Very important if you want to keep your thread mills alive. Thread milling is pretty simple once you get the hang of it, and the nice part is you can do it in all kinds of small hobby machines as well. If you still have any questions about how to thread mill, I recommend going to the NYC CNC page, and that's where we have all of our videos. We also have the calculator download and all the Fusion file samples, which is really nice to have. If you have any questions about that feed adjustment, Mark Terryberry from Haas has an awesome video on this subject, and this is actually where I learned this. But you've actually commanded this. Oh, yeah. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something, and see you next time.